All right, let's get started. Um, hi everyone and welcome to the No Fear Job Search webinar series. My name is Linda and I'm the marketing coordinator at JobScan. If you're not familiar with JobScan yet, we're a Seattle-based company dedicated to making the best online tools for job seekers. Um, we put this No Fear Job Search webinar series together in response to all the uncertainty in the world and the job market right now. And our goal with this series is to simply get as many job seekers as we can in front of the people and the tools that can help them right now. Um, today's webinar is the seventh of 15 in the No Fear Job Search series. So we're just about halfway through here. And today we have Anna Lokotkova speaking about how to nail a virtual job interview, which is a very timely topic. Um, we hope to see you at some of our other sessions this week and next week as well. And you can check out the entire series at jobscan.co slash no dash fear. I am pleased to turn it over to today's presenter, Anna Lokotkova. Welcome, Anna, and take it away. Thanks, Linda, and thanks for having me. Okay, can you see that? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Well, hello everyone, and I'm really, really glad to be here. And before we dive into the good stuff, can I just say how much I appreciate what the JobScan team has done to put this series together? I think it's a really cool project, and I'm really happy to be part of it today and to see so many people joining. I think that it's awesome, and it looks like we're like I had a quick peek in the chat, and it looks like you guys are from all over the world, and that is amazing. So thank you so much for tuning in and um, finding the time to be here. So today we will be talking about nailing a virtual job interview, which has become one of the hottest topics so fast and so recently. So this is something that a lot of job seekers struggle with today, even though, you know, I cannot say that uh, we didn't know what virtual interviews are before and they were part of like our lives even before everything happened. But for whatever reason, a lot of people are struggling with making a great impression on video and while doing a virtual job interview, because for a lot of us, it's so much easier to build that connection and to make that great first impression in person. So video ad adds this extra challenge. So hopefully after today, it will become a lot less challenging and you will even feel excited about your coming virtual interviews. So just a few words about, about me and you know, why you're listening to what I'm talking about in the first place. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna. And if I had to describe what I do in just one sentence, I'll say that I help professionals tell their stories and get hired. So every single day I work with job speakers who are on the lookout for opportunities. And these days, a lot of people are facing a lot of extra pressure and extra challenges. So my job, is to help them get through this, to help make sure that they have effective tools and they have an action plan in place that gets them to those opportunities that they want and deserve. So people know me as a resume and LinkedIn profile writer. So that is also part of what I do. I help people craft compelling resumes and make sure that they present themselves in the best possible way online and on LinkedIn specifically. And for those of you who might have seen me on LinkedIn, you know that that is the topic that I'm obsessed with, but we're not talking about that today. Um, so the other thing that, you know, people know about me is that I'm an interview coach. So that is also part of what I do is help people prepare for job interviews. And that has a lot to do with not just the mock interview thing. So getting ready and getting in a good shape and getting your interview muscle flexed but it also has a lot to do with knowing how to talk about yourself with confidence because a lot of people feel this huge anxiety when it comes to talking about themselves and it's always, am I too braggy? Am I too salesy? Am I doing enough? Am I not doing enough? So a lot of that stuff is something that I help people work through. And last but not least, I do quite a bit of public speaking and Again, I'm around online a lot. I create quite a bit of free content, videos, articles, posts, all kinds of stuff. And LinkedIn is the number one place where I do that. 
So in case if you are still new to LinkedIn and are looking for some valuable resources, let's connect and I'm happy to share what I know and you'll probably see quite a bit of my content as well. So what are we gonna be talking about today? Um, again, the very first thing that I always like to start with is whenever we're in point, point A and we wanna get to point B, we cannot really get there until we know what point B looks like. So for us today, in terms of you know, talking about virtual interviewing, what is point B? Point B is the kind of expectations your interviewer has from this kind of conversations. So this is something that we're gonna start with. Then we'll um, dive, like, dive into some of the common mistakes and some of them you know, are probably not new to you, so you have heard about them, but for whatever reason, even people who are very much aware of these mistakes, they still keep making them. So we'll try to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Um, then we'll go through some of the virtual interview essentials. So some of the things that you need to have in place to make sure that this kind of a virtual conversation runs smoothly for you, that you don't get stressed out and you make sure that you put your best foot forward. And last but not least, we'll go through some of the most important action steps that it takes to get prepared because I'm a big believer in preparation and obviously this is something that can make you feel more confident, less nervous and just eliminate a lot of you know, possible distractions and things that can uh, catch you off guard. And of course, at the end of this webinar, we'll have some time for questions as Linda has already mentioned. So um, today's reality is kind of new for a lot of you guys for a lot of people on the job seeking side but it's also just as new for a lot of employers as well because even those companies that were not big fans of virtual interviewing in the first place or were the ones who were always against remote work format and said that that doesn't align with their business and they don't know how to make it work well now they have to so this is kind of the best way to make progress happen is just to put people in front of a challenge when they have no choice and then they just need to figure out a way to make that work for a lot of people who are in job search mode right now and if you currently are you'll totally relate to this you know you you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but the worst part is that it's not just you neither do i neither does the recruiter and neither does the employer so in these kinds of conditions you cannot really rely on too much and you don't know where you can get all the answers so in this kind of uncertainty and turbulence and a lot of things happening at the same time it's really hard to figure out how can you really seal the deal with the employer and make sure that whatever decision or whatever result you arrive to together with that employer, how can you make that a win-win solution and how can you make it happen when we are limited and restricted in so many different ways? So this is where, you know, virtual interviewing obviously is, you know, the easiest form of communication in, in, in times like this, but it's not so easy when it's you know video and when you cannot really see the reaction of the other person as you would when you had a normal conversation with them across sitting across the table face to face so today we're going to be talking a lot about the different little tricks and hacks that you can do to make sure that you look good on video and to make sure that you replicate that same atmosphere of a human um you know conversation that would happen in person, but unfortunately it can, so it has to happen on video. Because, you know, it's not, for a lot of job seekers, I feel like, you know, it feels like the challenge is only on your shoulders, but trust me, the other side of the conversation, the employer side, they are feeling the exact same things you are feeling, because they are also on a mission to find the best person for the job, the best person who can help them figure stuff out and resolve a certain problem in their business, and it's not so easy for them to do when all they have is a camera lens and a screen and now they have to understand whether that person is indeed the right fit and that they're not making a big um, hiring mistake. So as promised, let's start with, when, you know, what is the expected result? What kind of expectations does your interviewer have from this kind of a conversation? The first and pretty obvious point, but I cannot really stress this enough positive energy and being a confident communicator. 
because a lot of the times people are very much concerned with, oh my God, what am I going to say? You know, should I say this? Is this too braggy? Is this, does that sound good? Does that reflect my strength? Does that resonate with what the employer is looking for? But we also forget that a lot of the impression that we make has actually to do not just with what we're saying, but actually with how we're saying those things. So those two always go together. And that is something that you need to think about because you are the point person here. You are the person who is in charge of whether that message that you want to convey actually does get received on the other end. And you have, you know, you have very few things under your control, but the way you position yourself and the way you talk and the way you build that conversation and create that emotional connection, you have the power to control that. So when you are displaying positive energy and confidence through your style of communication, you signal that professionalism and you make it way easier for the employer to understand what kind of personality you have and what kind of collaboration, like what that collaboration between you and them would actually look like in real life. Number two, which is also really important, and a lot of job seekers still forget about this or don't feel like it's important enough. Every interviewer, again, regardless of whether it's a recruiter, a hiring manager, whether you're talking to them for the very first time ever, or you have already had five or 10 conversations with them before, they always expect you to know something about the company. It doesn't mean that you can know everything because, well, some of that information does not get disclosed. Some of them is confidential. Some of it is, you know, is just really hard to find. But if you are, you know, about to have an interview and you have absolutely no idea what the company does or what kind of opportunity you're going to be talking about, something went wrong somewhere along the line. So you need to make sure that you do some research prior to that conversation and that is also important uh, because every employer, again, regardless of the kind of company or the kind of industry you are targeting, every employer wants to know why you want to work for them. No employer, again, absolutely anywhere in the world, wants to know or wants to feel like they're just one company out of hundreds that you've applied for. And of course, everybody understands that probably you're applying to a few different places and probably you're considering quite a few different opportunities. But it doesn't change the fact that your motivation plays a huge role in the kind of impression you're going to make during that virtual interview. So you got to nail that down to the very detail and be able to explain to the interviewer why you feel like this would be a great opportunity and why you want to work for that company specifically. The next big thing that every interviewer would be expecting from you is what's in it for them. And this is a really cool thing to talk about today because I work with job seekers every single day. And I know that all of you guys, what, like most of the stuff that people do in job interviews comes from a very good place and from like hundred percent good intentions. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out quite that well in practice. But the point is you feel like, okay, there's this pressure. And what if this is the very, you know, the only opportunity that I'm going to get in months. So I have to make sure that I make this amazing polished professional impression. So I got to tell them everything. They got to know what kind of person I am. They got to know that I am the best person for that job because deep down, you know that you would be great at that job and it would be a great opportunity both for you and for them. So what that results in is people talking only about themselves. Again, coming from a really good place, but the way it comes off to the person you're talking to is you're only centered you know, on the things you want, on the things that you're looking for, but what about them? And in any good conversation, even if we take it outside of the context of a job interview, any good conversation starts with what is the other person looking for and you know, let's talk about the stuff that matters to them. Then they feel like you're a good communicator. And there's this beautiful saying, and of course I can never remember the fancy way the actual saying goes, but you'll get the gist. Uh, the idea is that you know, you're talking to a person and tomorrow they may not remember who you are or what you do, but they will remember how you feel. So you know, if you agree with that statement, and I agree with that 100%, if you also do, 
maybe send a yes in the chat or a plus or something, letting us know that that is something that resonates with you as well. So, you know, this is the crucial point here because again, how can you make sure that you make them feel good, that you make them feel valued, appreciated, understood, whatever it is, by focusing on the stuff that they need. So, and, and also, well, not just what they need, but how what you have, so what you can do and what you know can help add value to their business, make their life easier, resolve a problem. Maybe it's a tiny problem on the scale of things. Maybe it's a huge problem that affects the entire business. It doesn't matter as long as it adds value. That is something that, you know, usually people say, like they call it the value proposition, which is a fancy way of basically saying what's in it for them, how can you add value to their business? And of course, you know, um, every interviewer expects that if they have any questions about your resume, you know, this conversation would be the time to clear that stuff up. And last but not least, again, any job interview, remember that, you know, I, and I know that, you know, in conditions like today, a lot of you are feeling so much added pressure and stress and this uncertainty. Will I have an opportunity tomorrow? Will I get a shot in a week? Will there be enough jobs in a month or two or three or whatever? So it might feel like it's the end of the world and this is the only opportunity you have. But no matter what happens, remember that any job interview is still a human conversation and it's not a one-way interrogation. You have just as much of a right to have questions, to ask questions, to be curious about stuff as the employer does. So make sure that you create a conversational atmosphere as opposed to just sitting back, waiting for them to shoot questions at you, firing back some stuff, and then who now I can relax like that. That is just really awkward. And that is really noticeable on video as well. So if you think that they cannot see it through the screen, I trust me, they can. Now let's go through some of the most common mistakes that people make. Again, you may have heard about most of them, maybe even all of them, yet for whatever reason, even when you're aware of these things, you still make the same mistakes. So obviously the top one would be um, starting the conversation unprepared. And what I mean by that is not necessarily, uh, you know, just the piece, okay, what am I gonna say and stuff, but just the setup. Because a lot of people, you know, well, obviously, if there are any camera shy people out there, first of all, big shout out to everyone who feels that way. But you are actually more likely to prepare and make, you know, and make yourself ready in advance. Now, talking to the people who are a bit more confident about the way they talk and feel like, well, you know, how hard can this be? I know how to have a conversation with a human person. I've been to job interviews before. Is it really that different? Trust me. There are a lot of little things that have to do with the video and virtual setup that affect the way you can build that conversation. And you may not even know it, but they might be hindering the way you make your impression and the way you appear to other people. So a lot of the times what I see is when I talk to job seekers every day and I know that I'm not interviewing them for a job. So technically I cannot expect the, expect the exact same thing, but still, you know, you see a lot of the, you know, different, um, things that go wrong or you, you, you see people having a really unflattering setup that creates that weirdness and awkwardness and makes everybody feel stiff and nervous. And it actually just, you know, can be fixed really easily if you did do some preparation in advance. The other thing that is really cool about, you know, virtual uh, conversations is that, yay, now they cannot see anything that is going on behind this little screen. So if I put my notes in front of me, I can read from my resume and I don't need to spend too much of my energy thinking stuff up and, you know, using my brain to come up with new ways of saying the same old things. This is actually, you know, a trap because whenever you start reading from your resume, you actually appear as someone who lacks confidence and is not a really effective and confident communicator. The reason why they are reaching out for an interview and wanting to have that conversation with you is because they already, they already, they have seen your resume, I promise you. And probably as they are talking to you, they are looking at it right now on their screen, on their phone, maybe in front of them having a printed version, doesn't matter. So there was something there that they liked already, but now they want to hear it from you. So just avoid that temptation of, you know, reading from your resume and thinking that people cannot really tell. Of course they can. 
The other thing that is also huge for videos and virtual conferencing is the eye contact thing. And I'm sure that if you've explored some of the resources prior to this webinar, you've already noticed that a lot of people talk about this so much that you have to maintain eye contact because it creates better communication, blah, blah, blah. Yet anytime there is a conversation, people are looking down on the screen or anywhere else around them, but the actual camera lens. And, you know, I understand that there is the distraction that you can actually see yourself on the screen and that makes it a little bit more awkward and a little less comfortable. But this, again, this is something that you can turn into a habit and understand that maintaining eye contact is huge and it's huge for any kind of conversation. So we're gonna be talking about a few ways how you can fix that a little later um, in the session. And last but not least, following up. I get these questions every single day. How should I follow up? When should I follow up? Should I follow up at all? Should I just wait for them to get back to me? What if the timeline is extended? Everybody's telling me that it's taking them forever to make decisions. I know all that and um, you know, it's, it's understandable. We're all in this together, as they say, and we're all facing the exact same challenges. But when you follow up, it shows your commitment, it shows your interest in the opportunity. So I'm not encouraging you to follow up every single day or maybe even every other day because that could get annoying, but following up every, let's say five business days, that is something that you should be doing COVID or no COVID. This is something that a committed and interested candidate who wants to maintain that line of communication would do. Unfortunately, people still forget to follow up and don't place enough importance on this, but I'm telling you guys, that can either you know, make or break the entire life, like line of communication you have with the employer. And it can actually even, I'm gonna go by saying, like I'm gonna go even further by saying that it can even get you the job if you know how to follow up well. Now, let's talk about some of the virtual interview essentials. Um, again, some of this stuff may be really you know, obvious or even seem very simple, yet it can completely transform the way you look and appear on video. So number one, of course, having good lighting. This is something that you need to take care of in advance and you know, there are home remedies of how you can figure this stuff out. Uh, you can do some reading, but what matters is having enough light on your face, you know, it's just, it's absolutely essential. I'm not gonna say even that it's important because it's just, it's the basic uh, must have in a video. If they cannot see your face, if they cannot see your facial expressions, how are they, like, how are they expected to have a decent like, conversation with you. So make sure that you figure out and you go around your house or your apartment and find a good spot that has enough lighting, whether it's natural lighting or whether you can figure stuff out with artificial lighting, doesn't matter, as long as they can see you really well um, on camera. Also, there are options like buying a selfie ring light. That is something that you know is very budget friendly. You can order it online on Amazon or other um, stores and other companies, other brands. So, you know, you could go for an option that costs under 30 to 40 bucks. Um, I'm talking Canadian, so even cheaper US. Uh, point is, you don't need to spend a lot, but you will have something that uh, will, you know, give you the opportunity to never have to worry about lighting on video ever again. If you just have that little selfie ring light, you can attach it onto your laptop, onto your cell phone, whatever device you're using. It's just super convenient, super easy, and it just takes all that headache away. Another super important aspect is having quality sound. Again, if they cannot hear you well, and some of that may have to do with the connection, so we'll, we'll leave that aside, but a lot of it has to do with the capabilities of you know, how you figure out a way to sound good. So if you have a really cool and modern laptop, probably your built-in mic is fairly good and that could be enough. But if you have a slightly older device or if something's not working there, sometimes, you know, it just doesn't function properly or whatever, just again, test this stuff out in advance. And the best and easiest thing that you can do is use your earbuds from your phone. So something that I'm doing right now, as you can see, it's, you know, very easy. It doesn't cost me any extra money to do, but it puts the mic closer to my face. It picks up on a lot less of the external noises. So you can hear me better. I can hear you, know, you better because I also, I, I'm not distracted by anything that is going on around me and I'm only hearing the, the sound. 
So again, think about this in advance. There are also even better ways to do this. So if you have, if you are willing to go like a step further and get an external mic, uh, so something that a lot of people use when they do podcasts or video interviews or like something that you may have seen bloggers use and you might think, well, that's a bit too much. Telling you, it's not always that expensive. You don't have to buy the most expensive, the best mic on the market. Like I got mine under, again, under 50 Canadian dollars, even cheaper US. So, but it has made such a huge difference in terms of how I sound on video. That is just unbelievable. So if you are willing to explore this, definitely recommend. The next thing is, you know, taking care of the camera angle. A lot of the times, a lot of you would do, you know, you will have your virtual conversations um, at your desk. So you would just put your computer or your laptop on your desk. And what happens is you're essentially looking down onto the screen and then the person on the receiving end is kind of looking at from that weird, not very flattering angle, right? And it's not only just about that, okay, maybe it's not flattering so you don't look your best, but it's also not flattering in terms of, again, remember, we are trying to replicate the same conversational atmosphere as if we're having a conversation in person. How are we supposed to do that if you're looking at someone's chin and not, not into their eyes? So the best thing you can do is make sure that you place the camera at the exact same level as eyes so that you know you can just put a stack of books under your laptop if you want to put it higher but if you want to have a glamorous video production trick ever but I use it a lot uh, so if you have a stand-up desk for those of you who do kudos for those of you who don't uh, and we're in the club of you know uh, just sitting wherever you know you probably have an ironing board at home which may not be used that often or whatever but it can have a second life as a stand-up desk where you put your computer or your laptop and then you adjust the height of that ironing board depending on where you're sitting so that wherever you're having your interview or your video conference, you can always have this kind of a setup where the camera lens is exactly the level of your eyes. How cool is that? Simple, nothing glamorous, works unbelievable. Um, the other thing is check your surroundings and especially for those of you who might be um, sitting at a desk and you have a window behind you, just make sure that you look into your selfie or the, the webcam that you're using in advance to make sure that there is not too much glare happening because a lot of the times if it's a really bright and sunny day, there's a lot of light behind you and then you go really dark and that's really awkward. So. And anything that has to do with the surroundings, again, do a really quick checkup in advance to make sure that whatever appears in the background is okay and is appropriate and is acceptable. Because you don't want to distract anybody by, you know, showing them something weird in the background. And last but not least, um, you know, finding the, the right kind of things that you want to wear. And I know that that sounds very simple and you're going like, well, duh, but... A lot of the things that we think look good on us because we can look at the mirror, they don't necessarily look that good on video because on, the, on video you can only see the upper part of your body. So you cannot really see the whole um, thing or the whole look. So this places a lot of focus onto your upper, upper, upper body. So you gotta make sure that whatever you're putting on, of course, well, first of all, is comfortable, but also makes you look professional and makes you look prepared, polished, makes you look good. And also by doing that, it makes you feel more confident. So think about it in advance and make sure that you choose something that is video appropriate. Now, what do you need to do to make sure that you're 100% prepared? Well, first of all, like we were saying before, testing your technology in advance, it doesn't take you, you know, hours. It just takes a few minutes, but it's so simple to do that quick light, sound, camera angle, surroundings, glare checkup but it just takes so much pressure off of you because it's already awkward for some of you to have a conversation virtually. So don't make it even more awkward by figuring out that, you know, you could have done something five minutes in advance, but you didn't. So now you have to suffer through it. Also feel free to take some notes while having a conversation because some of those points that you are finding out through, let's say your first um, interview with the company, you can use that in the upcoming conversations and interactions. But, but when you're taking notes, like we were saying before, 
don't expect to be able to read from any kind of notes all the all the time when you know when interviewing because again like we were mentioning before you want to sound natural and you want to prove that you're an effective strategic and um, confident communicator and that means that you can actually say whatever it is that you want to say in a compelling kind of way and you don't need a resume to read from to make sure that you get your point across also make sure that you minimize any kind of distraction so i understand that for a lot of you your families might be around kids pets background noises construction happening somewhere somebody doing repairs or whatever it is so make sure that you minimize all that but at the same time you know minimize it on your end but get ready that there will still be some possible interruptions and that is something that has happened to me recently i was actually doing a live stream on youtube and a fire alarm went off in my building uh, which turned out to be a false fire alarm but still you know that was a really awkward situation uh, which apparently i handled pretty well um, according to my audience but you know my point is i was i thought i was 100 percent prepared and everything was working at, at, at its best but even something like that could have thrown me off of my game completely but it didn't because i know that these things happen and you gotta act in the moment and make sure that you're able to handle things like that also when you're practicing in advance which is a really good idea don't uh, take practice as to mean um, memorize because for a lot of people when they hear you need to practice before your interview they think okay so i have to learn stuff by heart to make sure that i say the exact same thing in an interview you don't need to do that any good interviewer will see right through it and you will actually you know, you will feel that added pressure of, oh my God, what if I forget certain items or whatever. So practicing does not mean memorizing. And another thing that you can do that can be really helpful is record yourself on video in advance and watch yourself on video. I cannot tell you enough about, you know, how it changes the way you look at the way you communicate and the way you talk to people. Ever since I started um, sharing videos on social media and incorporating video in my uh, marketing strategy, so appearing on video a lot, having a lot of virtual conversations, I've noticed so many things that, that does, do not make me look good, that do not make me a good communicator. And the only way I could see it is by watching myself on video and realizing, well, now at least I'm aware so I can work on this and make sure that I can do something about it. And last but not least, when you, when you are about to have a virtual interview in the current conditions, the economy, the coronavirus, everything that's, that's going on, be prepared to, you know, to negotiate with empathy. Of course, I understand that you want the best for yourself and you want to make sure that you get this opportunity that you've been probably looking forward to for quite some time. But at the same time, you have to understand that for a lot of employers, it's really hard to commit to long-term things right now, especially when it comes to long-term investments or permanent hirings and stuff like that. So you might need to explore short-term solutions as a temporary thing to make sure that you figure something out that would be a win-win um, solution for both sides. So it might mean that you could um, explore project-based roles or uh, temporary positions instead of having it a permanent or um, contract roles and stuff like that and you might even need to be the first person to you know to propose um, that kind of arrangement or it, at least offer exploring that kind of an option so just understand that showing that kind of flexibility again helps you build a much stronger connection with the interviewer and really show that you are on the same side helping them figure stuff out and get through um, everything that's going on. And another really important thing that so many people disregard has to do with body language. Because for a lot of candidates, and I see that every day, trust me, for a lot of candidates, being on video means that, okay, I have to freeze my hands next to my laptop, sit up straight and never move and just talk like this. And that is really awkward. So again, we were saying before that looking good in an interview and making a great first impression, that doesn't have to do just with what you want to say. It has so much more to do with how you're going to say those things. And subconsciously, we're paying a lot more attention to body language than, than we give it credit. 
So, you know, how you say things matters. And at the end of the webinar, with Linda's help, you guys will be receiving a um, short tip sheet that I put together. So, that, like, top five body language tips for virtual interviewing to make sure that you take that into account and you work on your body language a little bit to make sure that you do put your best foot forward. So again, just one of the things that I cannot stress enough is looking at the camera lens as opposed to the screen or anywhere else. Because I could be sitting here right now and looking down on the screen or maybe on my phone or how would you know where exactly I'm looking and I'm still might like, you know, I could still be 100% focused on my message but you wouldn't feel like I'm actually paying enough attention to you as opposed to me looking directly at the camera lens. For a lot of you who are not that you know, familiar with video and it's not something you do a lot, that could feel awkward in the beginning, but trust me, you'll get used to it and just, you can just imagine that you are talking to your best friend or to anyone who, you know, who's important to you. And that way you still, you know, you're still able to focus on your message and say all the things that you want to say, but you are not distracted by anything around you and you're just looking and focusing on that camera lens. Um, obviously, your gesturing also helps a lot. So you, there is no need to freeze your hands or not move them at all. It's, it's okay to use your gestures and actually hand gesturing can, can help you appear more compelling and can create like that charisma that everybody talks about, right? How can I make sure that I appear charismatic? Well, that's how. When what you're saying and how you're saying, they are aligned together. Because if they're not subconsciously, we always trust the body elements, the body language, as opposed to the words that are actually coming out of our mouths. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind for your coming virtual interviews. So basically, this was um, everything that I wanted to go through today. And again, I know that we're jumping to questions right now, but before we do, I want to thank each and every one of you for finding this time and being so committed to your careers and your job search that you are willing to invest a lot more effort into how you interview, how you job search, and how you create that strategy that can help you get through everything that's been going on. And if you want to connect online, I'll be more than happy to, to connect always. So you can go to my website, you can find me on LinkedIn or on YouTube, um, and just make sure to connect. And if you enjoyed today's session, if you could send me a quick note, letting me know that this was helpful, that this was valuable, that always means so much to me. And I always, always really appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to shut up now um, and uh, let's get some cool questions. Uh, thank you, Anna, and we'll leave this slide up for a little bit as we move on to some questions. Um, and we've got a lot coming in through the chat right now. Um, someone, Eduardo asks, um, I've heard it's a good idea to ask questions to the interviewer throughout the interview. Um, do you have any suggested questions or a good starting point? For sure. So um, that's actually a really good question. So thank you. Um, it is really important to be able to ask questions because I was saying it's a two sided conversation. So you have the right to ask questions and to inquire about things just as much as the employer does. Um, some ideas for questions. First of all, you know, get to know the person you're talking to. Ask them how long have they've been with the company. Ask them what it's like to work for that company. Ask them what's the best thing that they've enjoyed throughout the years. And that way you actually get to know a little bit more about the culture and the kind of people who work at that company. Because it might happen that, you know, you might not even be a really good fit into that kind of a team or that kind of personalities that uh, stick around and thrive in that kind of environment. So you want to make sure that you figure that stuff out in advance. Also asking questions about how the role appeared in the first place. Was it a new opening or was someone else um, doing this job previously? If they were, uh, you know, what made them, um, you know, move away or what happened? Why aren't they in this role anymore? And the other thing um, that has to do with, let's say, if there was the previous person doing this kind of work before you. So ask what did the success in that role look like? Because that way you will pretty much get an outline of the top priorities that you can later on, well, not only keep in mind for your performance and the kind of expectations that they have, 
But more importantly, you can also use that to bond with them and to make sure that you build that link between what they are looking for and what's important to them and what you bring to the table and what you've done in the past. Right. It's always a two-way street. Absolutely. Uh, Matthew asks, uh, should you send the employer your resume via email prior to the interview um, if they do not already have it or even if they do already have it? Uh, well, if they do already have it, then probably sending it again um, might not be the best idea. But if they don't have it, I would absolutely recommend that you send it to them because they also, you know, they, they need some background information and they want to have something to work with, right? So they want to see bits of your career history, your experience, some of the things you've done so that they can dive into the stuff that's most relevant to them right away rather than you know, having to ask you very general questions and wait till they get to the bottom of the things that they are looking for. So if you can provide them with additional information, a link to your LinkedIn profile, your resume, go for it. Great. Um, and Stephen asks, does dress code still apply in a virtual interview? And should you um, wear something like a suit and tie even if it is a virtual interview? That is actually a good question. Um, I would say that um, it definitely applies, but not always to the same extent as an in-person interview. A lot depends on the industry, of course. So if you are interviewing for like with a top financial institution in your country, well, probably they would want you to look your best. So something like wearing a tie even could be very, very much appropriate. But if you're interviewing with a tech company that is more of a startup or more of a flexible environment and that kind of like maybe has the younger demographic or just in general does not care that much about dress code, then you can be more casual. But obviously, you know, we're not saying that you can be wearing your pajamas in an interview. So, of course not. Obviously, you know, I think whenever I don't know how I should be dressed, I always go for a little bit more, so overdressing just a tiny bit, because it just adds me confident that confidence in terms of they're not going to judge me for being underdressed, unprepared, sloppy, or whatever other word exists for this kind of a thing. So I would say, uh, obviously, you know, depending on the industry, so that's something that you need to think about, um, and and then yes, it does apply, and but in general, looking. Cas like business casual or casual is more than okay. Yeah. And another great tip I've heard um, about that is going on, you know, the company's glass door or Instagram or um, careers page and just um, looking at the pictures they post and seeing, seeing what the general dress code is. Yeah, for sure. That's a great idea. And also even looking at the LinkedIn profiles of the people who work at the company because if they all have, and I understand that not everybody looks the way they look on their profile headshot 100% of the time, but if they all are, you know, super, super business dressed, like 100% formal with suits and ties, well, probably then that matters in that kind of environment or that kind of industry. And if even on their LinkedIn profile, they are wearing a hoodie, well, probably, you know, that's more than okay in the company as well. Yes, definitely. Um, and we have a couple of questions about um, following up after the interview. Um, someone asks, what should we say when we are following up? Uh, well, the number one thing that goes a long way is saying a genuine thank you. So not just the, you know, cliche Google found um, sentence, but an actual meaningful way to show your appreciation. So it could look like, you know, thank you so much for finding the time to have our conversation earlier today. Um, like, it really resonated with me when we talked about this, or it was really helpful when you explained this. So going back to some, like, one or two key points that stood out for you in that conversation and kind of wrapping it up as showing your appreciation for that kind of insight or that kind of feedback or whatever it was. 
Also asking about um, next steps if you don't know that already. So if they didn't give you a timeline or if they didn't give you um, something to look forward to in terms of the next stage would be another virtual interview or we would connect over the phone. Ask them, you know, what would those next steps look like? And, sh and if it means that you need to wait a little bit, that's okay, as long as you at least know what you're waiting for. And last but not least, you know, offer some kind of additional information in case they need it. So simply saying that if there is anything else um, I can provide in terms of information about myself or insight into my career or experience, please, you know, feel free to let me know. I'll, I can get that to you anytime. So showing willingness to provide that additional information and additional value in terms of them understanding why you make such a good fit for that role. Mm -hmm. Um, and also regarding the follow-up, um, if you know the interview and hire manager and have their email already, do you recommend always following up with them via email or is connecting with them via LinkedIn advised? I, I would say uh, most of the time go with email because, um, you know, LinkedIn inbox can get really crowded and there can be a lot of stuff happening there and it's not that easy to keep track of so emails it's it's way more likely that they actually open up that message and have a look at it but if you also were not connected to them on linkedin before this interview or before this conversation go for it and again use that connection um, invitation to connect or that note that you attach when you connect with someone on linkedin use that to say thank you for the interview we had i really enjoyed talking to you about this or learning more about your company and this opportunity. Something quick and easy, but again, building that connection and showing, hey, this is another way how we can keep in touch. Great. Um, and then Butler has a question that a lot of people might be able to relate to right now. Um, what if you're not, you know, looking or feeling your best right now? Um, he says, I haven't had a haircut or color since being on lockdown. Do you think companies are more understanding about that right now? Yes, they definitely are. And, um, you know, again, we're all feeling the same way in that regard because, um, you know, no matter where in the world um, the other person is today, they probably have already been through the same stuff you're going through or currently are going through the exact same stuff. So definitely companies are way more understanding and um, we're all people and we can even, you know, sometimes joke about it or use it as a way to bond a little bit and have that small talk um, and use a little bit of humor to lighten things up and make sure that you still show some positive thinking and some positive energy. Because I feel like it's very easy to fall into the negativity trap. And I know that that sounds a bit condescending and that's not how I want it to sound. But, you know, we're all going through some struggles and challenges and for sure it's hard to be your best and keep in the best shape mentally and physically. But at the same time, you need to find a way to show positive spirit because when you show positivity when you show confidence whatever that looks like for you that makes people want to connect because in times like this we are looking for those people who are not down like who, who are still you know holding on to things and despite everything that's going on they still keep it real but at the same time they are looking forward to better things and that kind of um, spirit and confidence it shines through and it makes the conversation so much better so, you know, everybody is going through this, but at the same time, there are ways to still show some, you know, humor, some positive thinking and some idea around the fact that you're not always complaining, you're not always negative, and you are indeed doing your best. Um, and then we have a couple questions about uh, just virtual interview essentials. Um, Mary asks, how close should you appear on the screen, should you just be showing your head and shoulders or um, be a little bit further away? So I would say that, um, you know, the first thing that you need to think about in terms of your distance from the camera is how that affects the way you sound. Because mm -hmm. if I'm using these earbuds, like they are connected, right? So I cannot really go too much further without having either like making this, this thing visible or just being uncomfortable because I feel like I'm chained to this stuff. Um, but the point is, 
usually it's you know when you're showing just your face so if you're very close that's not a good idea but if you're also very far it's very easy to appear disengaged like you lack interest or you're not paying enough attention so usually what you want to do is you want to show like your pretty much head and shoulders but you want to lean forward a little bit without slouching or without you know doing this but if you lean forward that makes you more engaged and like you look more interested and more proactive in the conversation so that is important great um and then brenda asks um if you're currently using your laptop camera or a separate webcam and also um, about your microphone is it is it the um laptop microphone or a separate microphone oh so what i'm using right now uh, so for the mic i'm using the apple earbuds so the normal ones that come with any iphone and i'm using the camera of my laptop so the built-in camera and it's pretty good it's not the best but i think that it works well enough um, but for the mic i also have an external one which is the blue ice ball uh, which is the uh, well it's not the cheapest but it's also not the most expensive so it's one of those mid-range uh, mics it's more than enough for my purposes but honestly i got it mainly because i do a lot of video content right so i blog and i use video as a way to communicate with my audience so it's important to me that I don't always have this cords or all of that stuff, right? But if I just were to have virtual conversations uh, like job interviews or just connecting with clients and that's it, I may not even always need an external mic. I could use headphones and that would be more than enough. Um, and then Christina asks, what about um, eyeglasses glare from the screen? It almost seems impossible to avoid, but is that okay? Um, well, first of all, yes. Um, <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that uh, it's a really big deal. So sometimes, you know, when, when there's a lot of glare, it could be annoying. But most of the time, you know, that's where, where the lighting game comes in, right? So make sure that you have the kind of light where, yes, there might be some glare, but it doesn't, you know, take all the attention away from everything else that is happening on now I'm pretty sure, well, I cannot see myself on the screen, but I'm pretty sure I am getting some glare on my glasses, but I also have an LED light in front of me to make sure that my face is well lit up and you guys can see me really well. Um, but I also like it has a, um, like a handle so I can make sure that I can adjust the leveling and I put it a little bit above myself so that you can only see the glare when I probably look up. But when I look straight, there's a lot less of that stuff. So that is always in a relationship with your light, depending on what kind of light you're using, whether it's like natural light through the window, artificial lamp, whatever it is that you're using, that's something to test out in advance. Just use your selfie camera or the camera of your um, computer or laptop to make sure that there is a good balance. But if there is some, don't, you know, don't, um, don't think that is the end of the world because it's not. Um, and Christina asks, how can you prepare or troubleshoot for a bad internet connect connection? Um, what if our internet connection at home is bad? Um, well, uh, you cannot always prepare for that because even if you have a pretty good internet connection, it might just disappear for a moment. Or if let's say your spouse or someone else in your household is uh, consuming a lot of traffic, it might still, you know, you, you might show in pixels or there might be some trouble connecting and everything. Um, so, you know, the best way to troubleshoot, honestly, um, a lot of the platforms like Zoom or Skype, they offer like you can test your computer so you can do a test call with, uh, with the platform to see if everything is working. It doesn't always test your connection though, but that's something that can help. Also, if you have an opportunity to ask other people in your household to maybe pause their heavy internet activity for 30 minutes or just not download anything heavy or just if they're just browsing, that's okay. But if they're like, you know, watching a movie in, in HD or downloading some heavy files, maybe they can postpone that for just that time period for your conversation to make sure that even if there were any issues, you're still the main consumer of the internet traffic and hopefully everything works well. Yes, your interview is more important. I, I think so. It's probably than watching a movie, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. Um, someone asks, um, if you're asked a question during the interview um, that you don't know, how, how can you answer that? And along the same vein, what, what happens if you just freeze during an interview? How can you sort of regroup? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, so in terms of, you know, someone asking you something you don't know, um, if it's a question about, um, you know, your background or giving a, you like a scenario where you need to figure stuff out, that comes down to preparation. So if you really nail down what you want to convey, right? So what are the key selling points that you want them to know? And what are the key stories that you have? So specific examples that can back that up so that can act as proof of what you've done in the past. If you nail that stuff down in advance, there is very little chance that you will be asked anything or something that you don't know. It's, it's very, very unlikely. So in that regard, you know, number one is preparation. But if you are faced with a situation where you do freeze, I think the very best thing you can do is be as human about it as you possibly can. So for example, when I had that fire alarm in my live stream, like there was a moment in my brain when I just went, uh, no idea how I should handle this. And it was the first time I went live. So uh, I've never done it before. I've always just communicated in like recordings with a big audience. I'm not talking about one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, so it like for, for a moment there, I was like, oh my God, this is like, what, what, what am I going to do now? So what I did, I just talked to the people who were watching me and said, Hey guys, this has never happened to me before. Honestly, I have no idea what you do in a situation like that. And then the other person reacts and says something in return. And that's how you create that. You go back to that atmosphere of, okay, we're still human. We're still okay. I have some time to process this and to come up with something. So be as human about it as you can, because that can honestly happen to anybody. I've seen very experienced public speakers and um, communicators who do, like they do that professionally, still freeze on video or still freeze in stressful situations. So you're not alone in this and it's okay to show some vulnerability because we can all relate to it. Awesome. Um, and as we reach the top of the hour here, we'll just wrap it up with um, one last question. Um, someone asks, what is the best question to ask before the interview comes, in, comes to an end that will make a lasting or impression? Or do you have any you know, final tips to um, make a good lasting impression on the interviewer? Um, I would say the safest thing to do is to go for a question around something about them. So about their company, about the stuff that you covered in that interview that has to do with the company. So for example, if throughout the conversation, I heard that, you know, the person that previously did this job um, had a hard time handling something, then my last, like the thing that I would want to wrap up with is to find out more about this and make sure that I show some empathy and understanding and go like, hey, you know, I find it very interesting that you mentioned that that person was struggling. Do you think that this was due to this? Or is there anything that you think they could have done better? So again, focus your attention on them because honestly, throughout that interview, the more attention you can pay to them rather than yourself and the more questions you can ask around what they want to talk about the stuff that matters to them rather than yourself you win always because then the person leaves the conversation thinking hmm that went well they were very attentive they wanted to know more about me and people love talking about themselves so make them feel good by paying attention to those little things also if you see something cool or interesting in their background. Maybe it's, you know, um, like a book that is on the shelf that you also read. So like show that you are hundred percent present and that you're paying attention to what is going on. I think that is the best possible thing you can do at the end of a virtual interview or an in-person interview. doesn't even matter. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, we're just about up on our time here. Um, Thank you, Anna, for everything and volunteering your time for this. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I hope 
you guys feel a lot more confident in um, doing a virtual interview now. That's it for today, but I hope to see some of you at our future webinars later on. Best of luck to everyone in all of your job searches and in navigating these uncertain times. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me, Linda, and thank you guys for to everyone who's who's joining today. Thank you. Bye. Online listings make applying for jobs easier than ever. So why aren't you getting a response from employers? Easy applications means more applicants, which means more competition. Leading companies use automated software tools called Applicant Tracking Systems, or ATS, that weed out many resumes before they even reach a real person. So how do you cut through the noise? with JobScan. JobScan uses artificial intelligence to get your resume past the filters. We've reverse engineered their systems to create an intelligent tool that provides proprietary insights to optimize your resume at a much deeper level. So you can tailor your resume for each job based on precise keywords and skills most valued by the company. JobScan can even optimize your LinkedIn profile so company recruiters find you before you even know they're looking for your skill set. Let JobScan maximize your chances with every application. Register for your free account and run your first scan today.